So I recently switched from Ranger to LF as my terminal file manager, and they're very, very similar programs. Pretty much the only difference is that LF is written in Go and Ranger is written in Python. So I'll give you a quick look. This right here is LF. It looks very similar to Ranger. If you've ever used Ranger before, you've you can easily use LF without any trouble. But you know what? This actually isn't LF. This is Ranger. This is LF. They don't look different at all. So let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is LF here. I'm not lying to you guys this time. This time it actually is LF. So it's a very similar program to Ranger. You've got your Vim style hotkeys where you can just move around with the HJ, uh, K and L. You can press L to open up a file. You can do pretty much all that. You've got your previews. The only previews it doesn't do right now are image previews, which really bothers me. They just are listed as binaries because it doesn't support W3M previews yet, which is a problem. I would like it to have that, but I can ignore that because it is way better than Ranger for everything else. So most of the features come from all of the scripting you have to do yourself. So if we look at the config file for it, there's a couple of basic settings in here. Like I've got set previews to true. By default, they're true, but I've just got it in there in case it's changed in a later update. And you've got this preview script here, which I'll show you in a sec. Then we've got set hidden to true, which basically just says to show hidden files. You can show them and hide them the same way you can in Ranger by pressing ZH. And then I've got 256 color mode set to true. So here is where it really differentiates itself from Ranger. So in Ranger, when you want to do any scripting, you have to do it in Python. And that's dumb. That's really dumb. Why don't we just do it? In shell script, in POSIX compliant shell script, like everyone loves. Actually, I think this might be bash script, but whatever, it's close enough. So you can define custom commands the same way you could in Ranger, but this time you do it just in normal bash shell or POSIX shell. So the way you do this is with CMD open, and then you can define a multi-line command like this with the curly bracket notation. And then basically you can just put your command in there. So there's a couple of default values that are exported by LF. So if we bring up the LF doc, LF dash doc, it doesn't have man page also, which is another weird thing. So you have to do this weird LF doc thing. And then if we move my webcam up here. Here we go. So when you want to access the current file on the script, you can use $f. If you want to access all of the selected files, that's another thing that it has. You can still do things like, you can go like this and select a bunch of files. So if we move my webcam again and oh, close that, and you can then, so you can select a bunch, you can then cut them or you could copy them or you could, you could paste them somewhere. So if you want to come into this, let's say random folder here and then just paste something. I might've overridden the, uh, the paste key. Don't do that. If I had my paste key active, then I'd be able to paste something. So I'm still working out my config. So there's probably some stuff that's broken in here. So it doesn't have a make directory command by default, but that's pretty simple to add. I might just leave these commands in the description below in case you guys want to use it. So we've got also this thing to make a file executable because I like to do this a lot of the time. So when I'm writing a script, I can just easily make it executable from within LF. And then we've got this make file here and this pseudo make file. So if I want to just make a file from within my file manager, I can easily do that. I brought over my set wallpaper command, which I nicked from Luke Smith's video on Ranger. Basically, it just sets a wallpaper with FET and then copies the file into my config directory so I can load that up every time I boot my system. And we've also got this command in here to, I don't know what happened to those brackets, to open up a terminal as a background process. So if you don't open it as a background process, if I was to close LF, then it will close the terminal and I may still want that terminal open. So this is just to remove the default binding. So if you map a key and then don't give a option after it, basically that just says assign that key to null. And there's a couple of things I don't like having in my file manager that this does that Ranger also does. And that's like marks and things like that. Or I might want to move some hotkeys around to different keys. I can then just assign those to basically nothing and then move them. Cause I think cut is assigned to C or 
maybe copies assigned to C or something. I just don't like that. I'd, I'd rather use C for something else. So we've got commands to basically just open a file in different programs. So these just use the values you've got set in your bash profile. So if we bring that up, this command here will open up the file in my editor, which is nvim. This will open up in my visual, which is VS Codium and so on and so forth. Then I've got some commands basically for basic functions. So delete, cut, copy, opening a file. I also like it being on enter because I've got muscle memory to hit it with my pinky. Quit on escape as well. It, by default, it's Q. I'll show you the default bindings in a second. But yeah, all of my commands that I've defined earlier are also bound here. Then we've also got these commands to jump around quickly between files. So if we go into here, say I want to go to my videos or I want to go to my, my anime folder, for example, I can basically just jump around easily like that. So I don't have to worry about basically moving around and it's a pain to do that. So I've got pretty much bindings for every single folder I use on a daily basis. And then, or not even on a daily basis, just folders that I use semi regularly. And then I've got commands in here to open up my different config files in my editor. It's not all of my config files, it's just the config files that I find that I edit pretty frequently. I should put more in there, but I haven't just yet. So I said I would show you guys the default configs. So if we do ls-doc and then pipe that into a less, basically because we don't have a man page, I've got to just do it manually myself. So at the top here, we've got all of the commands. So it's got your movement keys, your cut copy, and rename, things like that. There's also some commands in here that aren't bound. So that, that CD command, I didn't have to make myself. That is already bound within LF. It's just not bound to anything. Same with delete. I don't know why delete's not bound to anything. That seems pretty important. You should be able to delete a file by default. And there's a couple other things in here. I haven't found myself using it. So if we come a bit further down, we've got all of the values that we can set in here. And not all of them are explained in the document, but most of them are. So one thing that I haven't gone over yet is my preview, which I did say I was gonna go over and just completely forgot about. So basically it's just a simple case statement. So if it's a star PDF file, then it will open up in PDF to text and pretty much just output the PDF file as a text file. If it's a plain text file, then it will just highlight the syntax in it and then cat it out. Nothing too special there. So as I was saying, most of these values are explained in here. So if you come further down, I'm not sure where, oh, here's how you use, like sort and do hidden files and stuff. I'm not gonna go over all of this, but if we come down to preview, ah, here we go, here's opening files. So this will explain how the open command works and things like that. If you come down to previewer, well, this will tell you how to set up a previewer. I haven't put in everything that's here, but I basically just copied out these two lines which is nice because I wasn't sure how to actually handle that. So one thing I noticed on the GitHub page is that if you come down here, there's a section in here on how to integrate it with various applications. So if we go into that section, if you want to do like trash CLI, auto jump, things like that, you can come through re and read this section. I haven't actually used any of this myself, so I don't really have any use for it. But if you do, then hey, come check it out. So I'll leave the link to this GitHub in the description below. So if you want to install the program, which I haven't gone over yet, which I probably should have done earlier, then you can use GoGet to download it. Or I downloaded it from the AUR because I don't really want to deal with compiling code myself. So if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon below if you want to see more from my channel. And if you learned something from this video, then hey, let me know in the comment section. If you're a big Ranger fan and you love Ranger, I'm not hating on Ranger. I think it's a really good program, but the fact that it's written in Python means that it is pretty much inherently slow. LF is basically the same application, but written in Go, so it's it's gonna be faster. And once we have image previews in it, I don't really have any reason to ever go back to Ranger. But if you love it, then I'm not saying don't use it. Use whatever application you wanna use. So I've also got a Twitter account where I'll talk about various video updates or I'll maybe talk about my config files and just random stuff I'm doing with that. I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out. <laughs>